Where is Hogos? Why is it significant? At the geographic center of the Eurasian continent, Horgos is a strategic central point along the Belt and Road Initiative uh, proposed by China. Why do ordinary businesses and people from China and neighboring countries converge there? What unique opportunities can the city bring to people in the region and beyond? I visited Horgos and spoke to a special guest to find out. His Ma Fu Ming, president of the Hogos Chamber of International Commerce and vice chairman of the Federation of Industry and Commerce of Ili Kazakh Autonomous Prefecture of Xinjiang Uyghur Autonomous Region. In the past, our older generation conducted commerce using traditional methods like camel caravans. All other aspects of trade were also old-fashioned. Yes, I rode both horses and camels. Since the collapse of the Soviet Union, trade in Central Asian countries has been closely linked to Horgos. We have personally experienced Horgos's ups and downs over these years in relation to trade. I witnessed these changes in Horgos from 1992 to the 2000s, when Horgos was elevated to a city. Later, the china kazakhstan Horgos International Frontier Cooperation Center and the Horgos Comprehensive Bonded Zone were established. We witness all the preferential policies the government has enacted from the very beginning until now. Yes, the changes have been tremendous. Since Horgos became a city in 2014, every policy given by the central and regional government has been specifically tailored for Horgos. For example, the tax reduction policies, a five-year exemption from enterprise income tax and a 50% reduction over the following five years, have all been significant policies aimed at Horgos's development. Horgos now has unique facilities such as the china kazakhstan Horgos International Frontier Cooperation Center, the Horgos Comprehensive Bonded Zone, the Horgos Highway Port, and the Horgos Railway Port. These are the results of Horgos's development over the years. The mechanism allows bartering between border residents, which was approved in 2022. The China Kazakhstan Horgos International Frontier Cooperation Center a specific area designated by the two countries for bilateral cooperation. Both sides provide a venue where people can trade freely. It provides services for trade negotiations, product exhibitions, hospitality and tourism, etc. The most significant feature is that products are duty-free, which attracts domestic and international business people to negotiate, trade, and engage in various business activities in the cooperation center. International business people from home and abroad can stay in the cooperation center for 30 days visa-free. For Chinese residents, they can also stay for 30 days after applying for a permit with their ID cards. The center also enables Horgos to act as a nationally recognized hub for opening up. In our years of doing international business, we lack communication platforms to arrange international events, product launches and trade activities. 
now invited clients encounter no cumbersome procedures. They can participate at the cooperation center with ease. As far as I know, other places are gearing up to adopt this model after our cooperation center took off. They plan to do the same thing near the Kazakhstan-Uzbekistan border. Convenience is crucial. Even though China and Kazakhstan are neighbors, there have been some information gaps and blind spots in various aspects. But with the cooperation center, we can easily overcome those challenges. It's incredibly convenient for any communication, business negotiations and exhibiting product samples. Its primary function is to make things easier. It streamlines business activities and is a hub for various government departments to collaborate, including meeting of customs and border inspection, discussions on rules and regulations, and academic exchanges, and more. It's so convenient because there's no need to apply for visas to come to China or to go through visa processes to travel abroad. Everything can be done right here in the cooperation center. Mm. 它的这个给霍尔果斯带来的优势体现在哪里？呃，咱们这个中保区的前身是。The uh, predecessors of Horgos Comprehensive Bonded Zone was the supporting area of the Horgos International Frontier Cooperation Center. It's now being upgraded, and with additional government policies, it's becoming a comprehensive bonded zone. Within the zone, all imported products for processing are exempt from taxes. After processing. Customs duties will be applied to process products after customs clearance. Process products in the bonded zone can be sold directly in the cooperation center, which is also tax-free, truly reflecting the positive effect of the policies on our products. When you factor in the processing aspect, we have several advantages. First, our technology and labor costs are likely lower. Other countries may have higher labor costs, shortages of skilled workers and technical equipment deficiencies. The advantage of our highway port is their proximity to neighboring countries, especially nearby Central Asian nations. There are 17 ports in Xinjiang, including seven bordering Kazakhstan. Among these, the Horgos Highway Port is the closest to Kazakhstan's largest city, Almaty. The transportation time is also the shortest. It's more than 300 kilometers from Almaty. Usually goods can be reached on the same day. With customs clearance, goods can be received on the second day. The port of Western Europe Western China Expressway is also in Horgos. And also goes all the way to St. Petersburg in Russia. The exit is in Horgos, connecting the western parts of China and Europe. The advantage of Horgos Highway Port is that it offers the most convenient trade routes for neighboring Central Asian countries. Transportation conditions are excellent and logistics are efficient. The customs clearance is much faster than at other ports. Typically, it takes one or two days to complete, while other ports take two or three days. Our transportation route is a full-length expressway, a condition not met by other ports. Additionally, 
the consumer market is closest to Horgos. Almani is the commodity distribution center for Central Asia. Small businesses from the surrounding countries, including Russia, come to Almaty to purchase goods. Furthermore, there is the Eurasian Economic Union, or EEU, founded by Russia, Belarus, Kazakhstan, and more recently with Kyrgyzstan and Armenia joining in. In Xinjiang, there are two ports for China Europe freight trains to clear customs. One is in Horgos, and the other is in Alashanko port in Bola. Alashanko is an older railway port that handles a slightly larger volume of imports than Horgos. Horgos handles more exports, each has its own conveniences. This is a preferential policy of the central government to all the border residents in border cities to encourage individual development and to supplement their income. It's a mechanism approved by China's Ministry of Commerce. Border residents can trade with foreign citizens and the products they buy can enjoy exemptions from customs duties for products worth up to 8,000 RMB per person per day. That is to say, products purchased up to this value are exempt from customs duties. Furthermore, these products can be resold or reprocessed for resale in the domestic market. Horgos is strategically situated in the core of the Belt and Road Initiative. While it may not be familiar to business people from home and abroad, its true potential lies in becoming an essential transportation and distribution hub for goods in the future. Think of it as a forward stocking warehouse for exports to other countries. Horgos can also be a forward product processing warehouse for Chinese exports into international markets. This offers a time advantage in delivering products to nearby nations. If there is a need abroad, we can send them immediately. When exported from Horgos, the products can reach most destinations in Central Asia within three to five days. The benefits are countless. When we do business abroad and communicate with foreign business associations and merchants, they are very satisfied with China's Belt and Road Initiative because they can directly enjoy the dividends it brings. Previously, many people abroad had limited knowledge about China, its culture, customs, products, and some were unaware of it altogether. However, the Belt and Road Initiative has prompted businesses across various sectors to explore and establish a presence abroad. Now international companies and consumers are directly benefiting from this initiative. Customers no longer need to go through complex channels to purchase products. Instead, they enjoy door-to-door -door services in some countries. People can derive much convenience from the Belt and Road Initiative. Mm. My interview with Ma Fu Ming, a local Hogos resident whose family has been doing external trade for three generations. Coming up on this special edition of The Point, how has the Belt and Road Initiative transformed the lives of people in Central Asia? My exclusive with a Kazakh scala. The BRI was launched by China, but does it belong to China alone? In a newly released white paper, China gave its answers and expressed its desire for the initiative to be a public road open to all, not 
a private pass owned by any single country. As the idea turns 10, how has it transformed Central Asia, known as the heart of Silk Roads since ancient times? My exclusive interview with uh, Ruslan Izimov, director of the Center for Chinese and Central Asia Studies in Kazakhstan. Mr. Izimov, welcome to The Point. First of all, last September, um, Kazakhstan was the first country President Xi Jinping visited after the outbreak of the COVID-19 pandemic. Why is Kazakhstan so important for China, in your eyes? Uh, first of all, thank you so much for your invitation. I think that Kazakhstan is of particular importance to China, not only in the last 30 years since the independence of the Republic of Kazakhstan, but throughout history. Why? Because the Great Silk Road that spans Central Asia was passing exactly through Kazakhstan. This Silk Road was not all about trade. It carried not only goods, but it was also a cross-civilizational bridge between Asia and Europe. That was a bridge for exchanges of philosophy, ideas, history, culture and religions. Today, at the present stage, we can see that the ancient Silk Road has been given a new lease of life, a new impulse. The reason is that the sea routes, which were the most reliable and affordable way of transportation, are becoming not so reliable nowadays, not so safe. Therefore, building the so-called land corridor between Europe and Asia is again becoming relevant. That's why Kazakhstan and countries in Central Asia are given so much attention. I think that this visit was first of all due to the fact that in the last 30 years, Kazakhstan and China, and above all the leaders of our countries, managed to build good and friendly relations on personal level, as well as a mutually beneficial relationship between our countries. Mr. Izimov, you mentioned the China-Europe freight train services. Um, I understand that since 2011, since the first train started in this service, tens of thousands of trips have been made. In this year alone, in the first half of this year, 8,600 trips were made by trains connecting, freight trains connecting China and Europe. What do you think made this service grown so fast in the past uh, 13 years? Yes, I totally agree with you, because transit and trade routes that go through the countries in Central Asia provide budget revenues in the form of transit fees and help develop the industry and logistic infrastructure. So it makes the most direct impact on the economic development of the Republic of Kazakhstan as well as other countries in Central Asia. This is indeed the great value of the land corridor through Central Asia. Uh, Central Asia. Some people are calling this uh, China Europe uh, freight train service as the steel camel caravans. What kind of specific benefits have such caravans brought to people in your country, in Central Asia in general, and even beyond? Firstly, as I mentioned before, that's the economic effect. Yes, that helps the economy to develop faster. Secondly, it has an impact on the development of infrastructure. That's the construction of new cities, new industrial centers, logistic terminals, even what we see now in Porgos, right here, the dry port. The dry port may sound like nonsense. Yes, there are seaports usually, but thanks to the efforts of Kazakhstan and China, we built a dry port where we have the opportunity to ensure the transshipment of huge amount of goods through our territory. So these are tangible results that new land corridors between China and Europe provide us with. 
So this is my first time to the city of Holgos. How many times have you been here? Holgos, uh, I go, how, how do I have been to Holgos many times because my hometown is not far from Horgos, about 30 kilometers away. The changes that are taking place in Horgos are really impressive. Just some 15 or 20 years ago, there was nothing in Horgos. It was a wasteland with just one border crossing. It was a pedestrian crossing point. Today, we can see huge infrastructure that allows us to handle transshipment of large volume of goods between China and Kazakhstan and we talked about the dry port of Horgos. It is the international center for cross-border cooperation that boosts bilateral trade. The Horgos Frontier International Cooperation Center is the first for China, it's also the first for Kazakhstan. Exactly what kind of experiment is being carried out here? What kind of example can it set for other countries to do trade and people-to-people -people exchanges in other parts of the world? I think the Corgus model, a model of cooperation at the International Center for Cross-Border Cooperation, may become a sort of template for new special economic zones in different parts of the world. Why? Because Corgus has become some kind of driver of economic growth, not only for China and Kazakhstan, but also a kind of bridge, not a bridge even, but a window of China to Europe. This is of global significance, that is to say, on the Eurasian scale. Goods that go through Corgus are going all across the Eurasian space. And today, conditions created at the ICBC the International Center for Cross-Border Cooperation. It is a visa-free access. It opens up even greater possibilities for so-called shuttle trade. That means citizens from Kazakhstan and other countries in Central Asia don't need a visa to visit this center. What do you think is the key word, the one most important key word behind the success of First of all, I want to say that Corgos is already a successful model. It is a success already, a successful center for cross-border cooperation, a successful center for bilateral trade. It's all a success already. We are successful, we achieved it. But the main point and the reason why we made it, I think, lies in the very need of this kind of cooperation between Kazakhstan and China. Why so? For many years, the main trade between China and the largest partners of China in the West was carried out via sea routes. Now, with the opening of Horgos, a part of the cargo traffic that went via the sea route goes via the land corridor. And that's why it has become so successful. The second reason, I think, is that our countries, the leaders of our states, have managed to build a friendly relationship on the basis of this personal relation. We managed to ensure greater bilateral cooperation. So during the past three years of the COVID pandemic, there are some setbacks. There were some setbacks to the operation of the Frontier International Cooperation Center. Now, as we emerge from that period of time, uh, what kind of challenges are authorities from both sides faced with? Do you think they are able to overcome these challenges? I think that the biggest challenge on the path of development of Corgus is probably low capacity. We need to modernize Corgus to extend its transportation capacity for goods. What we have already created today, I think, has reached its full capacity and we need to think of extending it further, extending terminals, logistic centers and centers to process large cargo traffic. My last question is about the Belt and Road Initiative as Horgos is a point in focus under the Belt and Road Initiative framework. Um, what exactly does the Belt and Road Initiative bring to the world? There are some 
not just Global South countries or countries in Central Asia who are paying attention to it. Countries in the West are also highly attentive to this topic. Some of them are even afraid of it, uh, skeptical of it. Do you think they should be concerned about the growth of this initiative? Очень хороший вопрос, спасибо. Я думаю, что озабоченность. Very good question, thanks. I think there are concerns about the Belt and Road Initiative, not only in the West, but even here in Central Asia. There are challenges and risks even. Certain risks are related to the Belt and Road Initiative. Shall Western countries be concerned? I think so. On one hand, we can see that the world order we've witnessed since World War II is changing. And instead of a unipolar world, we can see that a multipolar world is in the offing and processes that are going on in the world today are specially connected with the conflict in Ukraine, or rather, those transformational processes in the center of the Eurasian space. The existing world order is changing. That's why the Belt and Road Initiative proposed by China is undergoing transformations as well, and new risks have to be taken into account with new circumstances that arise on the way. On the one hand, why are Western countries cautious and why do they have negative views? Because the usual patterns of international cooperation and the international system that existed before, it's changing. That's why I think the Chinese side and the countries in Central Asia need to seek ways to overcome these risks. And with that, we come to the end of this special edition of The Point with me, Lu Xin. As always, you can follow me on Facebook and Twitter using the handle Lu Xin in Beijing. On behalf of the whole team, thank you for watching. You've got The Point. <laughs>